90 for Rocks, the Dark Jay-Z hanging backstage up at the Amsoil Arena in Duluth, Minnesota. And I'm sitting right next to Chris Daughtry from Daughtry. And first of all, Chris, uh, welcome to Minnesota. How's it going? It's awesome, man. Thank you for having me. We are really close, aren't we? We are close. <laughs> but are you okay with that, though? I'm so good with it, as long as you're not sick. We're no, good. I'm, I'm, I'm totally fine yeah, whatsoever. Be here, man. Talk about, yeah, you were in Minnesota last night at Mankato for the show. How was that? We had a rough one last night, uh, not because of the crowd. We had, uh, we had a lot of uh, stage technical issues going on, a lot of gremlins in the machine. But, uh, so we had to cut our set short by two songs because our, our monitor desk crashed. So other than that, it was awesome. <laughs> How's it been so far on this tour with Breaking Benjamin? Obviously, you guys are co-headlining. Uh, obviously, touring's fun, but it's also a grind. Yeah, it's a grind, uh, but we love it, man. It's uh, Those guys are amazing to, to be out on tour with. Um, we've been fans of those guys for a long time, and we've wanted to tour with them for a very long time. So it's you know we finally made it happen. And uh, I got my son out here on the road with me, so that's been keeping me extra busy. Um, you know, I'm I'm used to usually just taking care of myself, but <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, it's it's definitely been uh, work on this one. Now, talk about family because I read. Do you have twins? Yes. Okay. So one of the half of the twin is uh, twins are out here. Okay. And uh, the other half is at home. Yeah. All right. Well, we have something in common because I have twin daughters that are 19. So oh, I, I so how, how old are your kids? Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. So how's that been going uh, raising twins? Well, they're, it's boy and a girl, and they could not be more opposite. So um, uh, they're very connected, but very their personalities are very different. Yeah, but um, but I see, you know, I see so much of myself in both of them, and they're both musicians, and um, you know, uh, I've actually been we've been bringing Noah up on stage uh, for the last few nights. Uh, to play uh, a tune with us on keyboards, so that's been fun. Uh, moving on, let's talk about a little bit of the the latest song that you had coming out, yeah. Pieces, but I want to follow up before that and go back a little bit to actually the collaboration you did with Lizzie Hale and Separate Ways. 40 years, that song in the making, and you guys brought it back to life, did very well. Talk about how that collaboration all happened. Well, we just... Um we had been talking about doing like a classic cover for a while and um and we had kicked around uh some other 80s tunes like uh i think um final countdown was was uh was one of them we were gonna tackle but all i could think about after after i started thinking about it all i could picture was us doing like a karate montage i was like that's that's gonna be kind of cheesy and uh and so um uh, Stranger Things season five. I'm watching that, and in separate ways was was used in in one of the finale episodes, and I was like, "That's the tune we need to do." And um, then our producer Scott Stevens had suggested, "Oh, what do you think about doing it as a duet?" And I immediately thought of Lizzie because we had been talking about wanting to do something since like 2013, and. Um, and yeah, I called her up. I was like, "Hey, I think I got the tune for us." And she was like, "Hell yeah, it's my it's my go-to karaoke song." So <laughs> Awesome. And yeah, the rest is history. And really, you know, after that song, and obviously you've been around the industry for a while, but you've really kind of changed. And maybe not necessarily you've changed, but the industry oh, I Well, <laughs> I I mean there is that, but I mean going back to the American Idol days, you had this kind of persona, but I don't know if that was really truly who you were, and today what we're seeing now seems maybe that's the Chris Daughtry that you've always really wanted to be out there. Am I true on is that? A, uh, yeah. Is that an accurate statement or not? I, I, I would say that's pretty accurate. Um, uh, we, are, we are certainly doing the, the kind of music that I was doing from the very beginning before I ever went on a TV show. So yeah, this is, this is definitely where we've, we were destined to, to end, end up at. Yeah. And you're having fun doing it the most. Yeah. And let's talk about a number one song on rock radio, probably something you've always dreamed about. And it actually happened with artificial. Yeah. Like 17 years later. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and and as soon as uh, as soon as I made the decision to uh, to do what I wanted to do, we had a number one. How about that? Um, yeah, it, 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 
we we felt when when we wrote that song we felt like we had something really special and um and it was so drastically different than anything that anyone has ever heard from us so there was that you know not necessarily trepidation but just that 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 risk of like we're either going to be really uh people are going to be really jazzed or they're going to be really disappointed <laughs> you know um and we're you know obviously happy that it was it was the other absolutely and uh, actually on the way over here today kurt stuff had called me and said uh hey the song pieces flying up the charts already and uh, i figured it would what well, your t- comments about uh, how this song after obviously your number one song yeah. is doing I mean, it's 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 traveling a little faster than we expected, and um, we're we're not mad at that. Um, you know, I, this was one of the, f- if not the first song that was written for the the new record, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's you know it's really personal to me, and um, I wrote it after losing my daughter to suicide. I mean, not directly after, but it was inspired by all those events and. Um, once I got back into writing, like this stuff was just bubbling at the surface and, and made its way out into the, to the music. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very different song than artificial. And I think a lot of people are finding their own, you know, truth and meaning behind it for whatever that is for them. You mentioned, uh, the suicide and obviously, uh, I just found out on Instagram a day or two ago. Yeah. You and uh, Jacoby Shaddix and the boys yeah. from Papa Roach did a little family feud. Yes. Uh, talk about that. Well, I can't, I can't say a lot, but there was blood on the floor when it was all over. No, <laughs> um, no those guys, uh, they're, they're, they're incredible. Um, we, had, we had a great time, and we were both, um, you know, fighting for the same charity. And uh, it was actually... Um, uh, an idea that my manager had and and um, and I was like that seems crazy and awesome and um, he pitched it to Family Feud and they 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 loved it and uh, so yeah it was we we kind of flew in for the day and then flew right back out to to you know get back on the tour but it was so much fun um, and uh, it was it was all for a great cause and. And we can't wait for people to see it. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, I think that's coming out this summer is yeah. what I was told. So I, I know you're very limited in yeah, what yeah, you can say really on say that, but uh, I did see something. It's going to be a good episode, though. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I had a chance to talk with Jacoby last year over at Rockfest. So, and uh, obviously, he's so passionate about uh, the suicides. Yes. And uh, with his latest song, Leave a Light On, too, it's just done amazing things, hasn't it? Absolutely. Um, I, I told him the other day, I was like, dude, you're on like your 18th single with this with this record, man. It just doesn't stop. <laughs> They've had so much. It's a, and it's an incredible record too, man. I love it. Let me ask you this question: What's you've had so many things that you could do, you have done, and all that, but what's one thing yet that you have not done in your life that you would love to do? And I don't know where it's going. If it's music, if it's anything, whatever it be, is there something that Chris Daughtry? You know, you've got life here. You're, you're kind of in the peak of it right now. But what's one thing that Chris Daughtry has not done yet that he really wants to do? A movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, How do you see that playing out? I'm totally getting my ass kicked. But, but, or maybe he's my trainer. Maybe we do that. Maybe, maybe it's like a you know, karate kid type situation where he, he trains me up and I go, you know, fight the tournament or i don't know it's a crazy dream i had okay. but but uh i was a huge before i got into music i wanted to be jean-claude van damme when i was a kid and uh and he's one celebrity i haven't met that i that i would you know probably be a little starstruck over yeah wow. yeah cool. so a little maybe acting along with me to know i mean i've always i've always had a love for acting i actually wanted to uh, you know i did a lot of school theater and um wanted to go into acting before i found music and and uh, i've dabbled in it and and you know peppering it in with these videos um you know the there's some there's some uh there's some martial arts going on in, in the pieces video um my little nod to enter the dragon but um yeah i i've always had a fascination for action films and sci-fi and stuff like that so um that would that would be fun to 
to get into. All right. So if somebody's listening to this interview at some point, maybe you guys can get hooked up together, let's, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. I know we've got to get going here, but I guess last question i got to ask you, and I've, I've asked this to Ronnie Radke before, mm-hmm. and I'm going to ask it to you because currently it seems like a lot of artists are putting singles out and not necessarily an album. Yeah. And then Ronnie's actually kind of said, you know, it's all about attention span, you know? Yeah. And uh, well, I guess what's your feelings about that? Because it sounds like right now you, you obviously an artificial yeah pieces uh is there a new album coming out down the road are you going to piece a whole bunch of things together what, what i guess what is what's the philosophy that uh, chris daughtry looks at when it comes to putting out music well he, he's not wrong i think the attention span is um you know you, you you put out a body of work and then the single is out and then the rest of the songs are kind of i wouldn't say wasted but they don't really have a chance to get the attention because it's all on whatever's on the radio and then the rest is already out. So there's nothing exciting about it when it comes to radio anymore because people have already heard it. So yeah, there is, there's something to be said about kind of sprinkling the singles out, but I think, you know, the, to answer your question, we are working toward an ultimate body of work. We are just kind of being a little slower in, and peppering the songs out before the the rest of it comes out. Um, I don't know if there's a a right um, way to do it anymore, but I think think it, it, it does say something when the attention is on that one song and that's it. And then once that kind of, you know, peters out or whatever, you know, and you give them something else to kind of put their ear holes on, you know. Totally get it. Yeah. Cool, cool. And you mentioned rock radio. Let's, let's talk about rock radio just yeah, for a yeah. second. Uh, what does rock radio mean to Chris Daughtry and the band Daughtry? Oh, it's home. It's home to us, man. I, I'm so so stoked to be back on the format and uh, and to to be embraced. And uh, we've gotten so much support and love from rock radio. Uh, we're very very grateful, and to the the fans that. Uh, that are uh, supporting us as well. Well, 94 Rocks is glad to have you on board, and uh, I hope you're going to be there a long time. And I tell you what, I love, I do love the direction of the music you're going. I think you're going back to your original roots, and I love it. I think that's a great job, man. Thank you. Once again, thanks for the interview. I appreciate it. Have a great night tonight. should be fun. You going to be here at the show? Absolutely. We'll be there. Hope you guys enjoy it. Awesome. Once again, that is Chris Daughtry. We're backstage up in Duluth on 94 Rocks.